The full episode is now available on Patreon and YouTube memberships. Please see the link in the description for more details. And we are back to talk about what's going on in the news lately. But first, we have to talk about Mr. George R. R. Martin. Um, he uh, posted an interesting blog post most recently called Dark Days. He posted this on January mm. 29th. I've been wanting to talk about this for quite some time. Preston, you read the whole thing, as did I. Yeah. But um, yeah. yeah, the one thing that stood out to me the most that re- kind of infuriated me just a little bit was him thinking he doesn't have any influence which i think is ridiculous because like let's be real here you totally fucking do um having a sphere of influence and uh, as big as it is definitely helps this bullshit it really does yeah no i think that he does have influence i mean i've talked to at least many many people who say that yeah like george was one of the first people to kind of open their eyes to certain uh left-wing concepts um I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, I kind of, I know a lot of people say that about like punk rock and there's a lot of things that with, within punk rock for me that, that, you know, introduce those elements. But at the same time, there was a lot of things introducing those elements. So I don't know, like, I don't know if like one thing changes people, you know, it's, it's usually not just Andrew Tate, it's Andrew Tate plus all of those other fucking videos that they're watching, you know, or whatever. Right, right. Or, or people, people that they're, they're hanging out with or, or, you know. So, you know, we influence each other, but, you know, we're, we're, we're all just voices, you know, uh, uh, in, in choruses. So, yeah, he, he has, he has a, he has a big influence and he, he should, of course, use his, his uh, pulpit for, for good. And this is actually, I have to say, his last blog, Dark Days, when it comes to being just straight up political, like out there, I'm just going to tell you my beliefs. Um, this is one of the most like straightforward comments he's ever been. Like, yeah, he's always like here or there made jokes about like how horrible Trump is. And, you know, if, and if you read his stuff and you know, he's a left wing guy. Um, but this is like the straight up like these are the things I worry about in the world and how things are, 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 are going. Um, it's very doomer. It's very doom, doom and gloom. Um, doomer. That's, that's a word I didn't think you'd say ever. Yeah. But yeah, yeah you're right. No, you're, you're, you're right. It is, it is very doomer pilled. Um, the other thing he said that really annoyed me was the, but, and he's right, is the anti fan. Hmm. It really feels like, pardon my French, but it, it feels yeah. very bitchy about um the anti not on george's part the anti fans when you were a kid remember throwing a tantrum uh because you didn't like something and you mm-hmm. wanted it to fail that's kind of, like it, it's i would also call it karen behavior you know like when you see those videos of those karens complaining to like the manager or something about some minor inconvenience they want they want to shut the whole place down they want everything to fail everyone to lose their jobs that's kind of what the anti fan is it's very karen-esque behavior where you don't like something for some ridiculous reason that a majority of the fan base doesn't share and now you're rooting against it and you want it to fail because of this one small thing that you don't like that because and and because you don't represent a a wide variety of the the fandom you just want like more people on your side misery loves company and so does bitchiness bitchiness loves company well it's misery too i mean um wanting something to fail this is not the behavior of a happy person. I mean, these people that are like, har, har, har. The Marvels was like bombed at the box office. Har, har, har. Like, you think those guys are happy? Like, you think they're happy in their lives? You know? Um, that's the, that's the funny, that's the funny thing. So, yeah, when, it, when all these people that kind of want something to fail, um, I think you can have a lot of fun making fun of stuff. Like I think you and I have a lot of fun making fun of stuff, but we never want something to be bad. We want something to be good. You know, we want something to be successful. We want good art. Um, You know, so it's intriguing. uh, The, the idea of like wanting someone to fail. Um, Like, Oh, you guys put in a lot of work into something. Har, har, har. I hope it's all for nothing and you are you you know how stupid action is versus doing nothing you know 
This is also um, something people throw at you sometimes, you specifically, mm. because, and I credit you, you and Comic Book Girl 19 both, because you guys kind of started doing it um, around the same time. But I credit you as starting the whole criticism of Dave and Dan. And rightly so. You've read the books. You saw what they did with the show. After a certain season, you believe four, I think five, um, is when it started going downhill after that. Okay, fine. But you've also credited Dave and Dan with doing a lot of good shit, even oh, in the yeah. later seasons. What you, you, you praise when it's warranted, and you criticize when it's also deserved. Yeah, I mean, so. the, thing, the thing of Dan and Dave is, like, when they try they're really good at what they do, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like they're very smart, talented men um, who can produce really good stuff. So it's just the question is, is like, are they going to, um, you know? So, I mean, everybody is capable. Well, I don't know if everybody's capable, but a lot of these people are really capable of really great things. And then there's, then there's times when people phone it in um for various reasons you know you're busy you're worried about something else your mind is somewhere else you got something else going on in the, your life and stuff like that so mm -hmm. i mean you know for example like i love george r martin i love a song of ice and F ice and fire i also recognize that fire and blood yeah it's kind of phoned in like it's kind of phoned in you know like <laughs> it's like let's by the let's, way for those of you who don't know there's a reason he's saying that he's actually going he's actually doing a deeper dive into fire and blood and all the uh the pages and, and chapters yeah. of uh of yeah of the dance of the dragons but no i just wanted to say that because i know people are going to throw well what's the difference between you and preston being anti-fans we we praise when it's there and i will say this we're not rooting for anything to fail we want no. everything to be good why who the fuck wants it to fail I don't want anyone to have misery. Like, like, you know, the, I, I don't understand the concept, like, you know, the, the owning, owning somebody or something. Uh, I don't get it. Like, you know, so I don't, I don't, uh, I don't understand the, the whatever tears of somebody else. And, and what I and chalk it up misery. to is that these people were losers in high school and they had <laughs> no wins their entire like adolescent life. And now that they're an adult, and now they feel like they have a voice to like hundreds of thousands of people. It it's the one way yeah. in their life they can get a one up on anything. And it's it's always the I told you so culture. Right? Hmm. Uh, see, this looks bad. I'm, it's gonna be bad. And then what comes out, it doesn't do that good. I told you. There's like some weird euphoric feeling right. of the I told yous. I told uh, you it was gonna be bad. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's very odd. It's very odd. I mean, so he does mention that. Um. I mean, what 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 what's the full thing with with uh, dark dark days? He says, uh, in years past, I'd often uh, do a not a blog post on or about New Year's, looking back over the year that was ending ahead and the year to come. This year, though, as I reflected on the year that we just lived through, I found I had no appetite for living through any of it again. Twenty twenty three was a nightmare of a year for the mm. world and the nation, and for me and mine, both professionally and personally. Oh. I'm very glad for it to be over. Now, that's very, very harsh. Like, when I look at 2023, I don't think it's I don't think it's a bad year. Like, for me, I mean, I'm not having friends die like, right and left like George is. And, and he said professionally and personal, personally. Professionally, mm. I think you and I both know that the professionally is that he didn't do any pages for The Winds of Winter. Um and he he feels he feels very bad about that. I am guessing that's the there might be other things going on in that professionally, but I think that's a big part of it is no zero pages on Winds of Winter or you know no progress. Um, and we know that because he gave a page count a, a year ago and he gave a page count recently and it was the same number. So um, yeah, so. So, yeah, he really thought 2023 was bad. I think for most people, it's not so bad, right? The economy is really good in America. I mean, granted, he's going to bring up the things that are bad in the world. And it's true. The things that he's bringing up are bad. But um, unfortunately, so far, 2024 looks even worse. There's war everywhere. Ukraine and Gaza dominate the news. But there is war in Myanmar, um, as well as that our Western media just ignores Things are heating up in Yemen and the Red Sea, North Korea, nukes, testing, rattling sabers. Venezuela is threatening to annex three quarters of the neighboring Guyana. Um, now, this is not to 
this is not to say that the deaths of of 25,000 Gazans, mostly children, is something small. But generally speaking, war and death through military conflicts over time has been has been dropping. And although it always seems like there's another war and then oh there's war, oh there's war, it turns out there's not as much war as there used to be. <laughs> you know, like if this is um we're just tuned are, into it because of the internet. Right. We're tuned into it because of the internet. We're forgetting that, you know, I mean, there was a huge Congo conflict um th- throughout the nineties that killed killed so many people that people forget about Rwanda. Um you know, and then you go further back, and there were just there was war in South America and Latin America constantly, um, and so a civil war that was in Colombia that lasted forty years. I mean, there 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 is always war, um, and there, but there actually is less and less of it. As much, even though like we see it, and, and granted, like what Israel is doing uh, to Gaza is horrible. It's it's and it's it's dreadful. Um, but there's less war. There's generally less war now than there has been. So it's, this is just this kind of a doom and gloom way of seeing the world. Um, in fact, the world is becoming more peaceful. Um, so, you know, this is, this is just more about George's headspace, right? Like 2023 for most people is a pretty good year. The economy is great in America, you know? Um, and war in general, conflicts in the world is going going down. Um, meanwhile, the U.S. I, grows. I will. I, I yeah. do have to do my my. Uh, I do have to be that guy. Um, not for a lot of people. The economy is not great for a lot of people. Inflation is still up for a lot of people, even though it's it's better than it was a while ago. Uh, a lot of people are still suffering. Rent prices are still pretty high. Some people still have some fairly high grocery prices. Uh, a buddy of mine who's a big Biden supporter. I, he told me, he goes, bro, I'll suck Trump's cock if he can lower my rent prices by at least half. He can't. I don't blame him. I mean, he can't. He, I, I, well, he can't do that. But um, Which one? The sucking of the Trump's cock or Trump lowering the uh, – or both? B- I mean, both. But infl- inflation <laughs> inflation is now at a, a, a historically pretty low level of 3 of 3%. Um, mm-hmm. It's, it's uh, you know, things, things, things are doing pretty well. And to say like, oh, some people are hurting. Of course, there's always people hurting. There's always people hurting. But the only measurements that we have are things like unemployment rate, inflation, GDP growth. These are the mechanisms we had to have measure. And all of those are doing great. The employment, employment is, unemployment is incredibly low right now. Inflation is down. The GDP growth is up. It's, it's uh, all factors show a booming economy you know there is deflation as a concept but things don't deflate usually so mm-hmm. uh and but none and deflation is a problem in in and, in and of itself so look things are things are doing pretty well it's all how you you look at it you know it's like you can always take the 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 negative things that exist in the world and be like oh my gosh things are horrible but actually things are probably pretty good i mean the environment's probably falling apart, global warming and climate change. Is, but he says it's hard to it's hard to escape the feeling that we are living in the the Weimar Republic. Um, th- this is this me, he's talking when he says that he means uh, 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 pre Nazi pre Nazi Germany. He what I mean what he's saying is he's saying that you know Trump has a chance of winning, and then that's the end of America. Mm. Um, I am famous and I am wealthy and supposedly I have a big platform. Yes, he does. Whatever that is. But I've grown more and more cynical about this, this supposed power that people keep telling me I have. Has anything I've ever written here changed a single mind, a single vote? Probably. Probably has. I see no yeah. evidence of that. Well, of course you can't. What, what, what? The era of rational discourse seems to have ended. Uh, meh, Probably. I don't know. Uh, and death is everywhere. Well, I mean, people die every year. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, people die all the time. That's life. Howard Waldrop was, I mean, to say like death is everywhere. Like, no, I mean, people people die at pretty much the same rates. I mean, there might be a small shift. I think the American, American um, 
uh, stand, like um, age of death has has gone down a little bit since COVID and hasn't really rebounded up. But it's you're still talking like six months or a year or something. Um, Howard Waldrop was the latest, and his passing hit me very very hard. Before him was Michael Bishop, Terry Bisson, David Drake from my wild cards team, Victor Milan, John Jose uh, Miller. Uh, Edward Bryant, Steve Perrin, I still miss Gardner Dozios and Phyllis Eisenstein. Phyllis Eisenstein is who he, of course, um, dedicated uh, Game of Thrones to. She's the one that that uh, convinced him to um, put the dragons in. And mm. my amazing agent, Kay McCulley. Len, Len Va, Wine is gone. Vonda McIntyre, Harland Ellison, Greg Bear too. And oh, I could go on. I look around and it seems as though my entire generation of science fiction and fantasy writers is gone or going. Yeah, you're 75. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, yeah, that's what happens to people. They die. Um. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, like he's at the average death age of human beings. So yeah, half of his half of these people that he knew should be dead. Um, the only next sentence here that he says, yeah, the, this next sentence here, I I'd have to uh, argue against. Do you mind if I read it? Sure. Only a handful of us remain, and for how long, I wonder. I know I have forgotten people in the list above, and maybe that is the destiny that awaits all of us to be forgotten. Um, not you, homie. Not you'll you, be remembered homie. for a long time. <laughs> for a you'll, long be, time. You'll, you'll, you'll be remembered for a long time. And in my right. opinion, you may not be on the Mount Rushmore of fantasy writers because you didn't finish, but you will be for a lot of people in their Mount Rushmore yeah. fantasy yeah. writers. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, how many fantasy writers are really household names? Like really, you know, Frank Herbert, Isaac Asimov. I mean, and those are, you know, uh, Tolkien, Tolkien, Brandon Sanderson. Sanderson barely. I feel like Sanderson still has a ba- long you're list right. to go. You're right. You're right. Sanderson barely. Sanderson. Barely. I, barely Sanderson. I think bar- I'm th- where someone like where, where like our mothers would know. Right. No, my I don't think my brothers, my mother knows who Brandon Sanderson is. I always fuck up his name. Patrick Rot- Rotfuss? Rot- Rotfass? Rotfuss? I'm, I'm fucking up his name, but I'm pretty sure he made the Magician's Apprentice. Oh, wait, Patrick Roth. Here he is. Rothfuss. He is the guy that. Oh, you're talking. You're, you're talking King Kill, King Killers Chronicle. That motherfucker. Asshole, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That motherfucker. <laughs> he, that he's, motherfucker. He, he's worse than George. At least George put out five books. This dude couldn't even put out three. So. I mean, he also like. Uh, I mean the uh, that that scandal last year. What scandal? Where, where? Oh God, he he had a something like a Kickstarter or something where. He was going to release one chapter, one chapter from the third book, and if enough people like gave to some charity or something, and, and all of this money came in, like massive amount of money, mm. overwhelmingly amount of money, amount of money, and he never released the chapter. Oof, that <laughs> yeah. sucks. That sucks. <laughs> Not even one chapter. 